Hi, I'm Jacob Mason. I'm an applications engineer here at Keithley Instruments, covering the AFGs, power supplies, and frequency counters. And I'm Sydney Tanaya, also an applications engineer here at Keithley Instruments, in charge of all of Keithley software, including Keithley Kickstart. So today we'll be using that Keithley Kickstart to help optimize the battery performance of a Klinko Smart Fitness Tracker watch in conjunction with the 2281S battery simulator and the 2380 e-load. And we'll be using Kickstart's brand new battery simulator app to do all of the test setup and gather all of the necessary data. So now, in order to do this test, we of course need a model first. So in order to do that, we'll be using our 2380 to create a discharge model of this 180 milliamp LiPo battery taken from the Klinko Fitness Tracker watch. So for best accuracy with the 2380, we'll be using four wire sense. Um, and quick side note for the four wire sense, you'll want to have your sense leads closest to the dot and the source leads furthest away. This helps prevent any resistance from the source leads uh, entering the circuit as well. And now I'm going to show you how we set up this test for model generation in the Kickstart software. So to set up our test to generate a discharge model in Kickstart, you're gonna be met with a screen like this upon opening your 2380 in the new Kickstart battery simulation app. Now to set up our model, it's important to use the specific parameters corresponding to your battery as they are outlined by the battery's data sheet. So for the purposes of this application using the Kalinko smartwatch battery, we're setting our discharge current to 50 milliamps, our cutoff voltage to three volts, our range to three amps, our sample interval to 2.5 seconds. Our maximum VOC will be 4.2 volts. Our minimum VOC will be three volts. Our capacity will be 880 milliamp hours. And we'll be using four wire sense. And then of course, we'll be naming our model LiPo test model. Now, while we've already gone over some parameters such as discharge current and cutoff voltage, there are a few other parameters we haven't discussed yet. For instance, the range. Some instruments such as the 2380-500-15 have different uh, current ranges. For this purposes, we'll have either three amp or 15 amp range since our current will only, um, it won't exceed one amp for this purpose. We'll keep it at this smallest range value. Next is max and min VOCs. These correspond to the, the battery model itself. So once the battery model is generated, you see this max VOC is the max value that you'll expect in that battery model, and this min value is the minimum value you'll see in the in the battery model. Now capacity, this is not, we have to insert this ourselves. This is not automatically calculated by Kickstart. So I've gone in there and entered in 180, 180 milliamp hours uh, in accordance with the battery specs. Okay. Thank you, Jake. And then model generation is just as easy as clicking the run button. And so now uh, the 2380 is collecting data. Uh, this discharges the battery at a specified discharge current. Currently we are, we are using 50 milliamp. So this 2380 will take measurements of VOC, ESR, equivalent series resistance, and current uh, at the specified sample interval. Uh, this will lead to several thousand points of worth of data, and then the 2380 will interpolate that down to 101 points. Uh, this will the data collection will actually stop once the the battery is just discharged to the end voltage condition. Currently, we are at uh, a three volt end current condition. So once this battery reaches three volts, the test will complete. Once model generation is complete, you can view your model in the graph tab and see the raw data in the table tab. Now that we've generated our battery model using the 2380, we can start simulation. To simulate a battery model, open your 2281S in the new Kickstart battery app, and you'll be met with a screen that looks like this. To import that battery model that we just made, navigate to the model browser and select import model file. Simply find the file location of your model and select the model you want. 
Once the model's been imported, you'll be able to see the graph of its behavior and the table of all of the data contained therein. If you need to edit any of this data for any reason, simply select Edit Model. Once all of your edits are made, you can select Save Model, but otherwise we'll just cancel. Now that our model has been imported, we're going to go over to Simulate Battery. And under Selected Models, we're going to select that new LiPo model that we made. Now, as you can see, most of these parameters are going to match what we set during model generation with the accepting of our overvoltage and overcurrent protection. And for the purposes of this application, I'm just going to change our overcurrent protection to about 500 milliamps. Now that that's all set, all that there's left to do before we begin simulating is run the app. So now you can see as soon as the app begins running, these graphics immediately update with new information to the SOC beginning to drop. Uh, current updates are uh, being read in. And you can also see the your terminal voltage as well as your open circuit voltage. So this is the, the voltage that's being present on the battery um, in, while there's a load applied. And so going back over to these parameters, most of these are the same as before, as Sydney said. A few that need to be gone over. So this current limit, this is the maximum amount of current that will be allowed into the, into the dot from the battery simulator. Since our watch won't pull over 100 milliamps, we'll just leave that at the default 100 milliamps. Our overcurrent protection, this is the current level at which uh, the simulation will stop. Since in order to just make this a, a higher than our 100 milliamp current limit, we've just set this to 500 milliamps to ensure that we won't immediately shut off the test once we reach this, reach this current limit. Next, capacity. We, um, this should automatically be set, although there's some instances you want to make sure that this is uh, the capacity that is related to your battery, so 180 milliamps here. Resistance offset, this is a value that will be added to your ESR. For our purposes, since we don't want to adjust this ESR, we've just left this at zero volts. And again, the sample interval is the interval at which measurements will be taken. Uh, for your for your battery simulation, and we've left this at 33 and a half, or sorry, 33 and one third milliseconds. And another th thing to go over is this SOC slider. So as you can see, the SOC dropping dur uh, during our simulation as current is being pulled by the the dot. You can actually just slide through these SOC states to get to any percentage that you want. So here I've got it at 16.15%, and we can see it starting from there, as well as our VOC changed to that, the associated SOC value. And so you can see as soon as that simulation has started, the watch is now powered on while the battery is still disconnected. And so what has happened is the, the model that was created with this 2380, the 101 points, were brought over to the 2281S. And so each of those 101 points corresponds to an SOC from 0 to 100 and a VOC, or an open circuit voltage, at each of those points. And so what this 2281S is doing right now is it's running through those SOCs and VOCs dynamically, just as if a, a, an actual battery would. So you can see in real time with the Kickstart app icons, um, the battery being drained and the current applied to the battery. Yep, and the real value and the ease of use with using a simulator in place of using many, many batteries during your optimization testing during manufacturing is that all of your results, because it's all the same model, are going to be repeatable and comparable. So when that way it really helps you understand is it the device that's having issues or is it the actual battery batch itself? And then not only that, since you can uh, have an extremely repeatable battery, uh, you can make change, software changes on the watch itself to see how um, differences in software will affect your battery performance. So you can optimize your battery life based on your software. 
And then uh, additionally, instead of just running through like a normal battery would, say you want to see how the battery performance or the excuse me the fitness trackers performances at a low SOC, you can switch over to static, set your SOC to 5% SOC, and see how it operates at low voltages.